Today we're going to talk about something new. This is the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.1. Now this is a unique board in that it has the ability to integrate your stepper motors with either UART or SPY with additional pin configurations here. So I'm not going to go too deeply into what the actual steppers are in this tutorial because it's a basics tutorial. So I'm just going to point out what's around the board. For starters we have our steppers, so we have our X, our Y, our Z, then we have an additional stepper connection for our NEMA 17 stepper motors or possibly other type of stepper motors. Then we have our E0, our E1, and our E2. So you can do three different extruders on this board natively. In addition to that, we have ports for our EXP1 and EXP2 for LCDs. We also have a TFT connection for a touchscreen LCD. Then we have what appears to be several different connections for our end stops right here and then we have four connections for our thermistors for three extruders and a heat bed in somewhere in here. We also have additional spy pins but keep in mind if you're using spy for your steppers you cannot use this as well and then we have some additional connections down here for, let's see, we have SPY, UART, and we also have the I2C connections. Then over here we have a special connection for the BL Touch. And then further over we have an extension to, and then finally we have an extension one. These jumpers are used for controlling the TF or SD drive connection. Heads up, this is not really functional according to the directions. Then we also have a connection over here for Wi-Fi that we can connect to the board. Then we have our serial USB connection here and then we have our fan outputs. It looks like we can do three fans on the board natively here. And then we have our, let's see, additional heaters for either your extruder or your heat bed. We have a USB type connection here. And then finally, we have our jumper. Currently it's in the USB 5 volt enabled position. Throughout several different tutorials I may be moving this back and forth depending upon the configuration. Also what's unique about this board is we have car fuses in case we blow out something we'll only blow a fuse and have to pluck it out and put a new one in for these three fuses. So here underneath is our new power control. So as you can see there's several different controls. So we have motor power, we have power for the board, then we have our heat bed power, and we have our, uh, let's see, it says another bed power over here. But we'll figure this out in future tutorials. For now I'm going to show you how to basically understand the board a little bit better. So I'm going to flip this over. Okay, on the bottom of the board we have some heat control for our MOSFETs or our 1705s. We also have the ability to control either 3 volts or 5 volts on the silk screen that's outlined below here. And then it also says where the enable pin will be located for our steppers along here. So pay attention to this and also note that it says motor power, 
power, hotbed power, and then it says bed power, which seems a little bit unique. Okay, one of the problems that we're gonna run into with loading this board with firmware is that we're gonna have to load it via the TF drive on an SD card. So in order to do that, you have to purchase a Sandix card that has the ability to take a TF card so we can plug it into our computer to load the compiled firmware on in order to load the board. So I'm gonna walk you through the process of doing this. First thing that we have to keep in mind is with the SanDisk over here, that it's not in the locked position, meaning that it's writable. And next, we're gonna to have to pop the TF drive out, like so. And we're gonna to have to insert it into our SanDisk. So you're just gonna slide it in like so. Then we'll take it over to the computer and insert it. Notice that the lock position is this way and we have it unlocked so it's readable and writable. Okay, in order to set this up, we have a little TF drive connection over here that we need to insert on the computer. And you may hear a beep when I insert this. Okay, to start with, we have the firmware cursor file. Note the time on it, it says 10.35 p.m. Keep that in mind. Now, in this case, I need to tell you something. This board was purchased but with my own money. I'm not being sponsored to do the tutorial and no one is paying me to promote it, but I will be putting affiliate links in the description for your convenience to purchase. So with that said, I'm going to go over to Atom with Platform I.O. loaded. Inside Platform I.O., I have to show you something real quick here. In order to set this up, you're going to have to go to the Marlin website, which I'll leave a link for the firmware. You'll have to download the Marlin-BugFix-2.0.x. You'll have to then unzip it. Then with the unzip folder, what you're going to do is go to File in Platform I.O. on Atom, and you're going to do an Open Folder. And as you can see, this is what you should see if you've done it correctly. I'll include the instructions on how to load Platform I.O. on Atom in the summary description as well for your convenience. Next, you're going to go to the Marlin subfolder, and you're going to open that up. Then you're going to open up the source folder and you're going to go to the core folder. Inside the core folder you're going to open up boards.h and you're going to do a search on skr underscore pro and this is the board that we're looking for. It's board underscore big tree underscore skr underscore pro underscore v1 underscore one. So you're going to copy that you're going to close out of boards.h. We're going to collapse the core folder, the source folder, but then we're going to go to configuration.h and open that up. And we're going to do a search on motherboard. And what we're going to do is highlight board underscore ramps underscore one four underscore e f b. And we're going to paste what we just copied. Next, we're going to scroll up to the serial port for serial port 0. It's the first serial port that you'll see that has no comment. The one below is actually used for external devices, for instance, Wi-Fi, which we'll cover in later tutorials. But for now, we need to change the 0 to a negative 1. And then I'm going to change one thing so you can see the contrast. So we're going to do a search on end stop. This will be a way to confirm that we've actually programmed it. We're going to scroll down to where it says X min end stop inverting. And it, right now it says false. So we're going to change that to true. Next, we're going to go over to platform IO.ini. And we're going to do another search on 
SKR underscore pro and the board that we're looking for for our default environment is going to be bigtree underscore SKR underscore pro so we're going to copy that then we're going to scroll back up to the top and where it says environment default currently we have the mega AT mega 2560 that is our default chipset when we download the Marlin firmware so we're going to change that by pasting what we just copied to bigtree underscore skr underscore pro and to then compile this we have to click the checkbox which will create a compiled folder with our information for our firmware dot bin normally we would do the upload button which would then compile and upload to our board but because of the way this board is set up we have to do it this way so I'm gonna click the checkbox and I'm gonna click save and it's gonna compile for us okay as you noticed in previous tutorials like for the SKR version 1.3 there was a bin file with firmware as its name for the file type. In this case it's not true because we're doing it manually on the TF drive so we're only seeing what's currently there. So we're gonna go over to Atom with platform IO loaded and we're gonna to check to see that our build completed by going to platform IO and then toggle build panel now what it says is that it succeeded so we need to scroll up and see what succeeded and it says that there was a success so we know that something occurred on the big tree SKR Pro that was successful but it's actually been dumped into a folder where we downloaded the Marlin firmware so in this case on this computer for this I'm gonna to go to the SKR folder which is on the C drive for me I call it the SKR underscore V1 Pro I'm gonna open that up I'm gonna to go to the tutorial that I have for this which is the basics tutorial and I'm gonna open that up and inside here I have a firmware folder for Marlin bug fix that I've unzipped I'm going to open that up and inside here we have dot p i o e n v s that's in our environment folder so I'm going to open that up and then we have a big tree underscore skr pro we're going to open that up and down here we have something called firmware dot bin note the time and the date so we're going to copy this and we're going to send it to our SD card with our TF drive on it for our drive. Then we're going to navigate back to it. And as you can see, it's loaded on the drive. So the next thing that we have to do is place this in the computer for the motherboard for the Big Tree Tech. SKR Pro version 1.0 okay I've removed the SD card from the computer I'm going to remove the TF drive that's inserted inside it I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna plug it back into the Big Tree Tech SKR Pro version 1.0 and push it in with my finger you'll hear a click Next to load it we have to use power and we have it set for USB power so I'm going to take the big end of the USB cable for serial and plug it into the board. I'm going to take the small end right here and I'm going to connect it to the computer and you're going to hear a beep and as you can see currently it's trying to load on the Big Tree Tech board with that flashing light that was over in this area. So next we're gonna go over to 
printer face and see how things worked out. Okay, I'm in the print run directory for printer face that I downloaded. I'll leave a link in the description as well for you. So we're going to open this up. We're going to connect to the board to see if it works. As it says up in the upper right hand corner for our serial connection output, it says connecting. Then it says printer is now online. So to confirm that we actually made changes in the firmware and we can verify it, we're going to type M119 and check the status of the end stops because we inverted the X minimum end stop. So let's see what happens. So as you can see, there are no end stops connected to the board that I did in the tutorial, but we do have an inverted open versus triggered that we would normally see. So if you like my tutorial, please like and subscribe, and thank you for your time.